Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today, I'm going to be going over a pet peeve of mine, which is very ugly looking data tables. So let's say that you are asked to create a data table inside of a formal lab report. And so your usual data tables that you've used in Google Sheets are not going to cut it because first of all, they're very plain looking. And secondly, they just kind of don't go with the entire lab report. You want it to actually look good after all. I mean, a lab report is very visual in nature. It's not just data. Okay, so how are we going to go about doing that? Well, in my last video, if you saw it on how to make graphs, uh, we were looking at the effect of bike tire width on maximum speed. So I'm going to use the exact same example again. Okay, and uh, let's say that we wanted to make a nice data table for this type of experiment. Okay, so let's say we did three trials and um, we want to make a good data table for that. Okay, so let's say we did three trials. Um, what I'm going to want to do, though, is have about an extra, I'd say at least an extra column for that. Okay, so my trials are going to be columns, and I'm going to want at least four columns then. Okay, now how many data points did I technically have? I think I had one, two, three, four, five. So again, I'm going to go one more down than that. So I'm going to have six rows. So if I had five data points and I had three trials, I include one over on that and you'll see why, okay? And so here's actually the reason why. So this would be like trial one and trial two and trial three, okay? And then this would be my actual variable here, which I'm looking for, which is tire width in millimeters. And I measured the points at 22, 23, 25, 28, and 35. So these were my set tire widths, and then I did my trials. So this would be like a title. So make sure you have a title for your data table. If you want to make it bold, you can label it like table one, if there are going to be multiple tables in your um, actual formal lab, it really depends. Like it says, make a column for the independent variable on the left. So this is my independent variable. Um, let's actually, you know, kind of center those and center these. Remember, it's visual, we want it to look nice. Okay, that's kind of the point. Include labels for each variable. Okay, so I, I don't have any labels for these variables. So what's something I can do? Well, let's go to table and insert a row above. Now you might think that doesn't really seem to have done much, but it will let me select these three columns because they all have the same um, variable and it will let me merge those together. So if I go to table, I go to merge cells and now I can say this is maximum speed in meters per second. So now I have this maximum speed, and tire width. Now, you might look at this and say, well, this doesn't look good. I don't have anything to put here. So I can also merge those cells. And now I have something that kind of looks nice. Okay, it doesn't look as boring as usual. And then like it says, I can just start filling in all of my data, which I think I have saved, but I'm a little sketchy on this. So I'm just gonna kind of input in the random data that was collected. So I think that was 3.5. Okay, we'll do 2.2, 2.2, 2.5. And this was real data that was collected, by the way. 0 0.0, 3.1, 2.7, uh, 3.3, and 3.2. Okay, again, we want this all to look good. So I'm going to be centering it. If you wanted to add color to these, you technically could, okay? Um, if you go to table properties, it'll let you add, you know, different background colors to your cells. If you wanted to do that, if you wanted to add a border that's a different color, it'll let you do that. Um, there are a lot of ways you can kind of make this look a little bit nicer. And then also, I, I think you can just insert if you wanted to color. That looks horrible. But if you wanted to insert color individually into each 
sell and say like, oh, my trial one is going to be, you know, represented by, I don't know, green, you could do that, or, you know, you can kind of insert what you'd like. Uh, the only other thing that I might want to add is it says, if appropriate, include a column with a statistic such as an average on the far side. So if I wanted to do that, I could just, you know, click in any kind of, um, different row that's as far away from that as possible. And then I can insert a column to the right. And so that'll let me put average, okay? And so again, I can merge my cells together. And uh, if this is really bugging you, actually, you know what? I didn't even show you how to do that. Let's say I wanted to center this right in the middle of like a, um, of a cell, okay? So if you right click on that, Okay, it should, I hope this works. It should let me go to alignment and it will let me select center. And now it would appear right in the center. So again, if you right click on the cell and you go to table properties, it'll let you center something like this, which is kind of cool. Okay, and I actually didn't calculate the average for this, but you could put averages here and that would be a nice useful statistic to sometimes include. All right, so let's go over those rules. Make an actual title for your data table. Here you go. Again, numbering them, especially if you have more than one table, is great. Make a column for the independent variable on the left, columns for the dependent variable on the right. I included labels, okay? I included units. Um, I included how many trials were conducted, and I included averages over here, okay? And so if you ever need to go back and kind of make your table look nice, go through this video again, because it'll really, it really is a quick and easy way of getting a nice looking table in your formal lab. So I hope you found that helpful.